It's time for the news and sport for the borders with David Ferguson. Good morning. Housing Minister Paul McLennan was in Hoyt yesterday for the launch of the South of Scotland Housing Action Plan. The 10-point plan aims to address the recently declared housing crises in both the Borders and Dumfries and Galloway, with house prices becoming unaffordable for many first-time buyers, waiting lists for social housing at record lengths and homelessness at an all-time high. The Minister, Mr McLennan, feels making planning permission easier is a key step. There were discussions around about how we moved from the last planning framework to this one, uh, and that's again a meeting with local authorities to discuss that particular point. We've had a number of round tables with developers and local authorities to discuss how we can make that go through as quickly uh, as possible. One of the key things we talked about today was possibly looking at getting uh, the, the planners to come down and speak to both local authorities here in terms of specific issues they face. Don't you? But yeah, we need to make sure that the, the planning process is efficient as possible. Professor Russell Griggs, chair of the South of Scotland Enterprise, says there is a drive in the borders to make it easier for housing developers. From what we've looked at, land isn't an issue. We've got plenty of land. We need, as I keep saying, the planners to become enablers, not disablers, and I'm not saying they are, but they need to now enable. And again, that was a subject, and I think both councils now are very committed to making the planning process easier for developers. The region's largest social landlord, Scottish Borders Housing Association, is developing an innovative way of tackling the waiting lists with the conversion of unused garages into disabled friendly properties in Hoyk and Jedburgh due to be delivered early next year. Emma Gary is SBHA's Director of Developments. They're primarily for people with mobility issues because of level access, just because of the nature of a garage. There'll be one bed and some two bed homes, all of which will be really easily accessible with level showers, etc. So the hope is that they will begin on site this month. We've exchanged a contract and they should be complete by March, April next year. Now, bus passengers in Hoyk, Kelso and Jedburgh will enjoy an improved service from the start of September. Operator Peter Hogg recently won a £105,000 contract to enhance the service 20 between the three towns. Scottish Borders Council, who are funding the improvements, say that the changes will mean even a more even frequency of buses with clear departure times and also include Sunday journeys. The, Hogg with, the contract with Hoggs will continue for the next three years. Now, one of the border's oldest visitor attractions is aiming for a treble at this year's Tourism Oscars. The South of Scotland Thistle Awards shine the spotlight on facilities, events and the people leading the way in bringing visitors to the borders and Dumfries and Galloway. And Trimontium Museum in Melrose, which tells the story of the largest Roman settlement north of Hadrian's Wall, is in the run running for three gongs. Thania Menezes Flores, who has helped revitalise the museum's digital presentations, is delighted with the nominations for the Rising Star, Inclusive Tourism and Celebrating Thriving Communities Awards. When you go to Trimontium and you talk to anything, anybody who is a volunteer or a staff, everybody is so excited about the site and the history and the local history and tell you and share with you uh, what little or lot they know. Uh, I think that's contagious. It just brings you into the story of Tremontium, makes you want to learn more. There's also the story of the Ildon Hills and, and the people who live there. So I think it really captures the imagination that site itself is history and the people who are telling the history and their enthusiasm for the site. All the Borders nominations can be seen at the Visit Scotland website. Sport now and the Borders may have fewer representatives in the Scotland international squads than ever, but the region continues to produce successful coaches. While Gala Shields duo Gregor Townsend and John Diel have lifted the national side to fifth in the world rankings, former Melrose and Scotland hooker Stevie Scott has just signed a new contract as scrum coach with the rejuvenated Bath, who he and Scott's Finn Russell and Cameron Redpath helped to this season's Gallagher Premiership final. It's funny being at training actually when I've played with with Cam's dad Brian Redpath. You know what I mean. So now seeing Cam playing and I'm coaching the team that he's playing for is uh, is pretty cool to be fair. But the Scots guys fit in really really well. I think everybody knows that Finn's a, a quality player. He's got X factor, but the ability to bring other players to their best has been key for Bath this season. And Finn has been instrumental in that. Obviously his connection with Cam at Scotland helps. 
In racing, 18-year-old Hoyt jockey Rhys Elliott rode national question to a dead heat win at Musselburgh yesterday. And in Speedway, former Berwick Bandit skipper Leon Flint will be back in Bandit's colours tonight. But for one night only, the Borders Speedway team returned from a four-week layoff away to Oxford, with Flint having helped Glasgow beat the Bandits in their last outing at Shieldfield Park. Tonight, however, the former Great Britain skipper will guest for Berwick in place of injured captain Rory Schlein. Now let's catch up with the Borders weather. Here's Callum McCall. This morning will be dry with spells of sunshine and patchy cloud. During the afternoon, cloud will build in more widely from the southwest, perhaps bringing an isolated shower, but it should remain mostly dry. A suddenly breeze and still a warm feel, highs of 18 to 21 degrees Celsius. A look ahead into tomorrow and we will see largely cloudy and breezy conditions with the odd shower, particularly in the west, best of the brighter spells, will be in the east. BBC Radio Scotland's weather for the borders. Well, let's make the most of those sunny spells today, shall we? We'll have more news from the borders at half past 12. But now we'll hand you back to Gary and Laura and good morning, Scotland. On digital radio. FM. Your smart speaker. And on BBC Sounds. BBC Radio Scotland. And you're tuned to Good Morning Scotland with Gary and Laura. It's 24 minutes to nine. Well, let's get back to the news that the Prime Minister, Sir Keir Starmer, has seen off the threat of a Commons rebellion. As we've been reporting, just seven Labour MPs chose to break, break ranks, supporting the SNP's amendment calling for the abolition of the two-child benefit cap. They've since had the whip suspended for six months as a result of their rebellion. Well, let's talk to the SNP MP Stephen Gethins now. Good morning to you, Stephen. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, us. Laura. Thank you. Um, I suppose given the scale of Labour's majority in the Commons, you were never going to win this vote. So did you bring this amendment forward simply just to try and embarrass as many Labour MPs as you could? No, we brought this amendment forward because child poverty continues to be a blight on society, not just in Scotland, but in the rest of the UK, holding back our economy, hitting working parents. And the basic you might have expected from some of your um, some of, some of your MPs to be tackling as a priority in government. So I'm really sorry, I don't take this as this an embarrassment. I think in politics you've got to put forward the issues that you think are, are the right ones. And strikingly, also the right one that before the election we thought Scottish Labour thought was a priority as well. Well, we heard from um, one of Scottish Labour's new MPs, uh, Blair McDougall, earlier. He says that actually there's no difference in the policy between Scotland and Westminster in Labour on this. They all want to lift children out of poverty. It's just a question of timing and affordability. They want to fix the economy first. So do you just need to be patient? Well, look, I can be patient because you know i'm not somebody who's in child poverty but we know that this is something that drives it's not just it's about child poverty you know kids that don't know where the next meal's coming from fuel poverty you know especially now as we will we'll be heading into winter later in the year i'd love